the outskirts of life, this is the one worst dangerous part of Harlem. Everyone calls it Dodge City. See that doorway up there? Willie Bosket lived in that house. He was 16, and last year he executed two men on a subway train for a fistful of change. Jojo McNulty lived right over there. He's away for armed robbery. There's Bobby Green's house. They got him for manslaughter. And Leon McKintrick lived right upstairs. Now he's in jail on an arson. A mean part of the earth produces a very harsh crop. But let me show you something. Let's break a couple of stereotypes. Come on up to the third floor, and let me show you what the same stony desert can produce. Come on. This is Cleopatra Ransom and her grandson, Sean. He's 11. He does not steal. He's an honor student at public school 123. He lives in the middle of Dodge City, the home of teenage killers, and his future is bright. I want Sean to be brought up in a good environment. Mm. Mm. I really don't want him to think about going back into what he, you know, was in. Mm. And I really want to see him grow up to be a good and a healthy kid. Now, tell me exactly how Sean came to live with you. He uh, came into the bedroom there, and I was sitting there doing something. He said, Grandma, I want to tell you something. He said, I don't want to go back to live with my mother anymore mm -hmm. due to the fact that her and her friend abuses my brother and you. Mm -hmm. She has this boyfriend, yeah. and he takes the money, and they spends the money. Yeah. And he said, a minute time, she goes off. Oh, she leaves us for two and three days at a time in the house alone, even without food. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, save me, Grandma, save me. Don't let me go back. When he went into his bedroom to sleep, uh, first few nights, he didn't want to stay in there alone. So he came into my room one night. He said to me, Grandma, I'm asking you to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. He said, please allow me. Give me a chance until I'm nine and a half. Let me sleep in the living room where I'll be near you. Yeah. He said, I promise you at nine and a half, I'm going into my bedroom. Yeah. And he did just that. My grandmother loves me, and I'm, lo I'm very much loved here. Mm -hmm. And why, I'm, why I am loved is because my grandmother, she doesn't do some of the things my mother used to do. Yeah. Tell me what it's like to be sitting in the window and waiting for your mother to come home. Well, it's very lonely. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. You feel like, you know, you're just gonna, you're just gonna die or fall out the window, maybe, mm -hmm. just watching. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you wanted to fall out of the window? Sometimes. Now, Sean, your grandmother told me that you so you wrote a letter to her and you left it on her pillow. It's this letter. Did you write her this letter? Yes. You did? Uh-huh. Now, do me a favor. Read it for me, huh? Dear Grandma, I want you to know I love you dearly, and I want to thank you for letting me come into your life. I've had it hard in my life, and I want to... I want you to know I appreciate everything you've done for me. Your grandson, Sean. We have a holiday this week called Mother's Day. It's founded on love. I hope there's as much love in your holiday as there is between Cleopatra Ransom and her grandson, Sean, all year. This is Jimmy Breslin in Harlem. See ya. <laughs>